The footage you're seeing now is taken from the German Ritzkracker headquarters in 1985. This notorious footage of Sam Ritzenmeister, the inventor of the classic Ritzkracker gear shape, modeled after his granddaughter, shows the janitor himself having a massive mental breakdown, and for good reason. Ritzkrackers were the beloved snack of pharaohs and Caesars at the turn of the first century, but by the 1980s, sales appeared to be plummeting towards the brand's inevitable bankruptcy, as most of the US population was too busy enjoying Back to the Future and video games to worry about silly things like eating. In a desperate attempt to save the company, Samuel invented the Ritz Pinball Machine, a classic game with a twist. Every time you get a thousand in-game snacky wacky points, the player would receive one Ritz Cracker, injected directly into their mouth by its trademark Snacker Shellacker. This caused the US population to develop a Pavlovian reaction to pinball games, and then everyone liked pinball and, or something and every company made a bunch of pinball games, I think. And that's why we're making today's video. Pinball is almost like the original spin-off genre in a sense. I mean, you don't go to an arcade and see Pinball 1, 2, 3, Knuckles. You see Star Wars, Terminator, and as a spin-off enthusiast myself, I found this topic to be particularly interesting. So what qualifies for this video in particular, it has to be a pinball video game that is based off of a pre-existing video game series that is not about pinball. I'm holding in my hand here the exact rules for what qualifies for this video if you want to look more into depth. If you're the kind of person who has the tendencies to leave comments on YouTube videos, particularly this one, you might want to give it a read. And I say that somewhat smugly because I know quite a bit of you didn't last time and I'm not mad at you. I'm just a little bit disappointed when there's food in the fridge when you get hungry. <laughs> We'll kick it off with Metroid Prime Pinball for the Nintendo DS. Now this is one of those few examples of a game series that actually perfectly fits the genre it's going for. If you ever played a Samus game featuring Samus, you'll know that sometimes she turns into Ball Samus. It's officially called that in the games. And there's always some physics to it, a little, a little bit of bouncing action. <laughs> and even more fitting than that, the Nintendo DS is the only video game console to have one screen on top of the other in the form factor, creating sort of a tall screen instead of just a wide screen. So this actually works for pinball. If you've ever seen a game of pinball, such as pinball, any of the other pinball games, you'll notice that it's, it's kind of a long table that stretches out in front of you. So this makes good usage of the DS's screens to accommodate for that. Wireless pinball. I'm sick of my pinballs always having wires holding them down. Oh. Yes! Although you should probably get that checked out. That's a that's a basketball joke for all those basketball fans out there. Wow. I can't believe Nintendo didn't design this game properly, so those that rail doesn't even line up. Like, I don't know, man. Okay. Well that's about my favorite mechanic yet. Thanks, Miyamoto. If the player gets a certain amount of points, they will automatically lose. Yeah, that's that YouTuber. Yo, the game's named after that guy. Oh, my bad, guys. Whoopsies. And to add on to its fittingness even more, it also has a lot of gameplay aspects that would not be capable in a physical machine. Like, if you're gonna make a pinball video game, you might as well use the fact that it's a video game instead of a physical machine to your advantage. Add things that can't physically happen, such as you can some, suddenly start shooting. See, you forget how simple pinball is until you start suddenly playing Call of Duty midway through. I do at least wish that they didn't overlook the fact that, it, that the screens don't line up properly. Like, I'm playing this on original hardware, and it's just appalling to me that they didn't quite think of that. Now, if I were on my PC recording with OBS using an Xbox controller to play, that would be one thing, but, you know, that's simply not the case, because I don't break laws. And I, I, I respect human rights, too, so you guys, you guys don't even, don't even start with me. Hey, let's go. Huh? Yeah, and Super Mario Brothers. And on top of all that, they're using all these gimmicks from the DS and from Metroid to make like a really interesting but fitting pinball game, and they didn't use the touchscreen, which I think is actually great. This isn't a this isn't a ridicule, this is a thank goodness because every other game for the DS that's making any usage of the DS hardware is like, well the touchscreen's the coolest thing. We have to use the touchscreen specifically. You really don't. And the gameplay, the way this is set up too, is not you just play a pinball game with Metroid as the theme and some, some extra little mini game. You actually play through multiple different boards and it kind of progresses a story. So you, you know, it's pretty, it's an open world pinball game. If I really, you know, if I had to describe one. As loosely as open world can be used, which is how people use it nowadays, let's be honest. Ooh, I got so many little opinions on every little thing right now. Frick. 
My name is Zab from Metroid. Oh, wow. Eat my dirt, Sam. Eat it. Crunch it in your teeth. <laughs> oh, the last one's mad. Really, he was not having a good day. Oh, I got a little, I got a little extra arm over there. <laughs> Samus is under fire. Samus is under fire. She sent an emergency directive. Join the fight. She has sent out an emergency directive. Please enter your parents' credit card number immediately. Uh-oh. The sickness is flaring up. Amateur mistake, Peter. Samus is under fart. Help her plug stinky nose. Stop. Space pirates are panicking. Their stocks are dropping at a rapid pace, and they're unsure whether or not to pull out. Samus is writing her PayPal. She sent out a message to them. Join the postal service. Samus has lost at pinball. She sent to the main menu. Don't say frigate. I'm gonna get the monetized. Samus is playing pinball. She sent out a request for more quarters. Bat. Okay, I guess it stands for bad at to video game. Now, as fun as this was, it does suffer from a couple slight things that are just inherent issues that pinball itself has as a genre. Those being side paths that sometimes the ball will just randomly go down and you didn't really have any control over that. It's not a skill loss. Uh, sometimes the ball going straight down the middle and you can't physically hit it. That's something that is prominent in pretty much every pinball game and the pinball table in real life. Other than that, good difficulty, good variation, fun little gimmicks and stuff. And yeah, all in all, this is actually a very fun, full-fledged, like, Nintendo actually put effort into a pinball spin-off game of Metroid, which, after having played it and known about it for a few days, seems normal, but Metroid Prime Pinball is not one of the things that I thought I would hear about in my lifetime. When I was first born, those first 10 minutes of my life, I'm running through all that, yeah, I'll probably hear about this and this and this. Metroid Prime Pinball is not one of those, but it is actually really good. We started off with a bang. I mean, this is a really phenomenal game overall. I think it's an easy S. S. You know, I hate to start off by morphing my ball here, but let's let's be honest, if I don't do that, I'm gonna probably get slaughtered. At least I don't want to be slaughtered. This is my job. I also greatly enjoy it, and part of why I enjoy that at the moment is because people sometimes like me and I don't want I don't want that to change, so. <clears throat> The next one is Pokemon Pinball. This one sucks. It's really stupid and stinky and nobody likes it. That's a joke. When you're making a pinball game on the DS, like Samus up there, it's pretty no-brainer to use both screens and kind of chop them in half. One half is the top half of the board and the other is the bottom. But for the Game Boy, you didn't have as much freedom and you definitely didn't have as many pixels. So what they did to solve this issue is the board is still divided into two different screens and it just follows your ball. So if your ball is on the lower half of the screen, it's there. If it goes to the upper half, it shoots up to the upper half of the screen via pure white flashbang uh, jump cut. You know, I was playing on original hardware on my computer on a very vivid OLED screen and it did start to hurt my eyes, but I could see where if you're just on the original Game Boy Color, it probably doesn't. Oh boy, thanks for that. This is pretty chill so far. I like that you're catching the Pokemon. It's kind of a reference to uh, video game Pokemon. I'm gonna guess that's probably gonna be a Charizard under there. Oh, he's cute. His name is Katka. You get yeah, Pikachu, thank you. You can maybe just hit it out. You don't have to do that animation every time. Sweet of you though. Nice. So, I'm using the the sussy ball. Should probably catch Ziggs asleep in one try. Yep, yep. Going to Diglet stage. I don't lose. <laughs> okay, well. I really digleted my own grave there with that commentary. I, this game sucks! <laughs> Gotta catch me a Johto. Dang, shoddy, okay. No, Pikachu! You just had to be over there, didn't you? Yeah, you should be sad. This being a Nintendo game, one thing that they always thrive on. The game's very easy to pick up and just know what you're doing automatically. You hit things, 
and you get visual and audible feedback that kind of tells you what you're doing and it leads you in the right direction. There's no big tutorial. Nintendo used to always be so good at just kind of putting you into a game and showing you how to play. Everyone knows the classic dissection of the original Mario 1-1 level from the first Mario game, right? Now it's like, if, yeah, you walk forward. You know how to do that on that. You walk into the Goomba, you die. Oh, you learn you need to not walk into the Goomba. And so you jump. And when you jump, you hit your head on the block. And when you hit your head on the block, a little thing comes out. It's like, it automatically uses your expectations of what you will do to teach you how to play the game without throwing a bunch of words at you or a tutorial video or anything like that. This game does that very well. Like old Nintendo and even old Game Freak, I'd say, kind of does that very well, as far as I can tell. And then I played the newest uh, Pokemon Snap, the one on the Switch, and I think I did a video on that. And I recorded for maybe two or three hours and I wasn't even done with the tutorial stuff and it was still telling me what to do by the end of that session. I don't think I ever got to the normal game. That was an experience. Uh, pinball games, guys. All right, well, let's try blue. Oh, but the thing about blue, uh, it's a different color. Pikachu, you're supposed to catch that. Oh, Spyduck is up there, he's spying on me. All right, no more, no more fake Pokemon jokes. It was funny 12 videos ago and we still have like another Pokemon game on this list. I mean, I, okay, I might misname a few of them if it's like really f Because I did think of one funny, like, uh, like that guy on the left there, his name is Poliworld. He's named after the Polly Pocket movie. You bounce around for a bit, you encounter a Pokemon, you hit him a few times, you catch him, and then you can look at them in the Pokedex. This game has a full built-in Pokedex of all the original, like, 2,300 of them. That of, the, that of which you must catch all of. Anyway, I think I did get a Pokemon in my Pokedex. Oh, yeah, right there. Eakins, brother of Ethan Snake. Slowpoke Dopey. Whoever gave him that last name is a little bit cruel. I feel like this is a good way for me to learn about Pokemon. Like, I just didn't know this guy was a snake. Sick, nasty fun and a bottle of rum, and I do quite like this. Now it is for the Game Boy, but we're not gonna be such a stickler like we were in the racing genre. You can make as good a pinball game as you want on the Game Boy, with some exceptions. I'm gonna put it up here in a B tier. B. I won't quite put it A because there are certain things that I require to enjoy a pinball game, that of which that did not deliver me on. That being said, the second game, Pokemon Pinball Ruby and Sapphire, did deliver me on some of it. So part of what I really like from a pinball game is somewhat a replication of the real life physics. And just with the Game Boy hardware, you can't always quite get that. It felt quite a bit closer in this for sure and was also graphically a little bit better. So instead of swapping between screens, cutting kind of abruptly, now you actually have a tracking camera that follows the ball as it goes. And it's fairly smooth, fairly well done. Definitely a step up, like using the hardware to progress the game as you would. Other than that, there's not a ton different, at least from the core gameplay and the, the genre that they're going for. It's pretty much expanding upon and improving upon graphically and, and physically and emotionally. And probably spiritually. I don't know the lore enough to give any statements on that, but... Oh, sheesh! There they are. They couldn't even afford sprites, so they just cut the Pokemon out of these pieces of paper. There they is! There are the rubies and sapphires! Ooh, very refined. How many Pokemon do we get? Quite a few! My ears can't really take that. Is that Chick the Rita? Dang, my ex. Yeah, sorry to report, things just didn't work out between us, but... Anyway, I don't want to get in my personal life here. Look, little Pikachu's back! So, you use left and A for the bumpers. I don't... I just don't... I straight up don't like that. I'm not playing this game. Like, you have perfectly good triggers on your game console, and you think, eh, use left on the D-pad. Chikorita, cut it out. This is why things didn't work out, because you have to act like that all the time. Oh! No, he was so happy, and then I electrocuted him. I like that guy up there in the top right. Pikachu, that's you. That is on you. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah? That's that YouTuber! Oh, Yoshi Egg! Do I get him? Oh no, he's brain dead. Rita, quit sitting there like you don't know anything! Pikachu, that is on you! Hey. Oh, okay. Are you proud of yourself? 
You drew some weird brown hole. Congratulations. Uh, I don't know if I like that. Okay. Ooh, that's a uh, spiny guy from Kirby. Bless you. Oh. Oh, he's hiding. I gotta find him. I'm sorry. I didn't know. I didn't mean, I didn't mean to hurt you, sir. Oh, sorry. No, I'm sorry. I don't. Guy, I'm not trying to. I don't have good control here. I just feel bad. He's just trying to run and play. I'm sorry. How many times do I gotta hit this guy? I'm actually getting bored of it. Like, I'm feeling less and less bad now. No, <laughs> I didn't mean it! Oh, great. I'm very proud of myself. Thanks, game. Yeah, a Dorito. I don't know why I said ew, actually. That's delicious. You could probably keep, like, fun little snacks, like tortilla chips inside Pokeballs, I bet. I mean, if you can fit full-on Pokemon in them. That's on you. That's 100% on you. Every single time you're not looking. I get you're like a rat. Okay, you don't have to rub it in with a 30 second game over screen. Ah! Alright, let's see what I got. Nah, just put an image of Pikachu, I don't care. Oh, he's from the Toho region. Overall, pretty decent. I mean, just an expansion on what Pokemon Pinball already did. Uh, one of the ones I liked more on this list, for sure. So I'm going to put this up in A. A. We're starting off on the high horse here with all these. Or should I say, a high horse. Worm. This is the only one that wasn't released for a handheld system. Now, Sonic Spinball was released on a console, but it is also for the Game Gear uh, on handheld console. This is the only one that isn't, and it's also the only one that really isn't much of a pinball video game. This is just a realistic simulator of what would be a Worms pinball machine if you had it, and don't get me wrong, it does that very well. Like, the physics are actually very satisfying and decent. It feels more realistic than any of the other games we're playing today. But it just doesn't use the fact that it's a video game, that it's on the PC, to its advantage pretty much at all. Like, this is a great alternative if you really want to play a pinball machine, and you don't have one lying around, or you don't have an arcade you can go to. You could play this and be like, 50% satisfied in the same way, but it's not something you get if you want to go buy a video game. Because this just tries to emulate what you get with like a real pinball machine, and you just can't quite do that. There's something very special about going to an arcade, putting in some quarters, there's people around you maybe, people that you can impress with your high score, putting out your high score into a pool of other people who have tried really hard. The physical feel of the ball rolling around and you're messing with actual physics uh, makes it really fun. If the ball gets stuck between a bunch of bumpers, that's pretty fun in real life pinball. In video game form, it's kind of annoying. When I go to an arcade, right, and I'm playing a pinball game that I played 50 cents for, I shouldn't have to open up a separate EXE and change the controller. Oh dear. Oh dear. You've really jimmied my beans. Sick. Oh dear. Yeah, I know. That was really bad on my part, to be honest. I should have been better at pinball. These characters are butt ugly. It's like if you were to make a, a fishing game. Like, the kind of itch that you scratch by going fishing, you can't, you can't get that in a video game. You can make a fun fishing video game. It's not going to fulfill the same purpose as going fishing. It's good for what it is, but my main point is, if you're going to be judging a video game on being a video game, this doesn't really do a lot in that regard. And if you want to scratch that itch of playing a real pinball machine, Go to an actual arcade, or find some way to do that actually, and you'll be 50% more satisfied. But it's fine. Even that being said, it's like a C-tier video game. C. I would say Space Cadet Pinball is higher up. B or higher, poor haps. Poor maybe.
Let's move on to the Sonic games we have. Sonic Spinball, and like I say, this one was for a couple different systems, but it's it's generally the same game on each of them. The one that I played was like the Genesis Master System. I don't know. It's, I guess systems are confusing and complicated, and I don't care. You can tell me in the comments. It'll be too late. The video will have already come out. Haha, you couldn't save me. Now, pinball as a genre is one that requires a couple different things. A precision, good reflexes, and a pretty good estimated system like in your brain of estimating how physics will react to things, how the ball is going to bounce, how each bumper is going to affect its trajectory, things like that, right? And I played this as a kid. I actually had it eh, probably like 10 years ago or something like that, and I didn't like it, quite frankly, at all. I went into it recently to replay it for this video and went into it with a new light. I thought with my new, more patient adult brain, maybe I would appreciate the intricacies of it. Maybe just appreciate pinball more in general. And I did not. Man, I love the soundtrack for this game, especially in the options menu. It feels nice on the ears. Oh boy. Okay, well, if... Okay. Sonic loses momentum when he's walking forward. Who designed this game? This is not my Sonic. I don't like that. Hey! So Sonic, he's the pinball itself. Which is all, uh, pretty cool and all. Who's controlling the flippers? Like, is this an Eggman thing? Get up! Maybe, maybe it's like, I'm helping Sonic. I'm using the flippers. Uh, it's like me. I was there with him, and I'm his friend. And he calls me, like... Jay or something. Like some cool like 90s kid name. Wow, Jay! This, this, this bussin'! Now on paper it has some pretty cool, interesting genre twists and things that make it a pretty unique pinball game. For starters, you actually control Sonic like in a regular Sonic game where you can run left and right, spin dash, jump, things like that. Uh, you don't really get to use that much, it's just on the occasion where he lands somewhere that isn't on the pinball board, if you want to get back into play. But he doesn't control well. It's just, it's, it's gonna be one of those things, I'm telling you right now. It's just like in the last video when I commented on Sonic Riders. Sonic Riders has gameplay things that I could not master, I did not get very good at them, and as a result, I did not enjoy the game. Technically, yes, the reason I didn't like the game and put it lower was mad cause bad, in a sense. But also, I don't want to be good at a game that feels like that. And the same goes for Sonic Spinball. This game does not entice me to want to be good at it, to maybe enjoy it the 10% more that I might if I were actually good at it. There are mechanics that I could master, but they're mechanics I don't want to master. A good game should give you mechanics that you haven't mastered yet, but you want to get better at and want to improve upon. This does not give me that. It drives me away and tells me, go play a different game. Yeah, like I want to be up here. I want to go up there. Yep, that's all good. All right, I switched the lever on this side, right? Yeah. So I need to go to the other side, I think. I don't know. This is the thing too, I've never been very good at math. Bah, 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 bah. You get to restart, you stupid loser. <sighs> do it 12 more times. Never mind. Too bad. That's quite a shame that you lost your soul to eternity. <laughs> Can you not leave? You can't exit the door. I'm editing this mouse on the screen. I'm playing on original hardware. I think I, I wrote right here, when you do control Sonic very briefly on occasion, he controls like bum rip. And, and I end quote. I'll give this game credit for maybe being the third or fourth most well-known pinball game on this list. I mean, when you say pinball video games, most people will mention this. I just don't think it deserves to be that notorious. There are others on this list that I think deserve a little higher spot than this. It is not F tier. I am putting it E. E. It's quirky. It's like one of the original pinball video games that was maybe worth playing. Great, I'll give you a cake. If we were making a tier list of which pinball games were most notorious early on in the video gaming history, then this would go pretty high, but that's not what the list is. Sonic, whoops, Pinball Party on the other hand. I actually put a lot more hours to this one as a kid. I didn't just give up on it straight away. I actually did like a little bit of a Let's Play series on this. I don't think I got very far, but I did put some effort into trying to play and beat this um, because it is more fun. Admittedly, this is a superior pinball game for sure. 
Now it's not perfect, it's got plenty of flaws, but in terms of like mechanics, physics, graphics, sound, all that stuff, it's great. I mean, it is a Sonic game on the Game Boy Advance, and they really peaked in terms of presentation for what was capable on the console. I think this is one of the greatest eras in terms of Sonic presentation on a console, using it, not only using it really well, but using it very consistently. Sonic Advance 1, 2, and 3, and Battle, and this all have a pretty similar style to them visually, audibly, graphically, to the point where they even all have the same chow garden. For me? It was all of every Sega character ever. There is a tiny chow garden. It's the same as, as in the, the Sonic Advance games. I will just play this the whole time. Not gonna lie, I don't really know what I'm doing, but it's a lot of fun. This one can be pretty hard to aim on for some reason. I don't know if it's because the ball moves faster or there's something with the physics, but it can be very difficult when you're trying to just aim towards a specific spot on the table. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work that well. And aim you must, as this is a full-fledged story game. What does that have to do with aiming? I just had that in my script and I don't know what it means. The one time I start reading from the script specifically. In the story you actually get PNG dialogue and there's an actual like tournament bracket for each stage that you have to beat and it's entertaining enough. Like it will keep you engaged if you're a Sonic fan to the point where you may, even if you get bored of pinball, just play it because it's like, oh, I have a Sonic game to beat. It actually qualifies as a Sonic game, not just a pinball game. Story. Pieces return to the world after Sonic has foiled Dr. Eggman's evil plan. Which time? Need more context. Game, come on. What do you think this is just a pinball spin-off? You don't have to give context to the whole lore in the universe? Sonic fans obsess over this stuff. Sonic, the hero of justice, must rise once again to take a stand against Dr. Eggman. The hero of ju that's him! You will pay for this, Dr. Eggman. That is so what I say when Dr. Eggman comes to my store and brings something up to the counter to buy it. Hey Sonic. Nice to see you, friend. I like you a lot. Hey, hey, Knuckles! You're looking quite cute today. Sonic, thank you. My self-esteem has been low and I needed a compliment from my friend. Do you use the triggers for the flippers? No, you don't. Who designs these games? Hey, at least there's a text telling you what to do. Most of these pinball games, you just kind of got to wing it and find out. And although the Nintendo ones have been pretty easy to figure that out so far, because Nintendo's pretty good at intuitiveness. Sega coming up with like, hey, we'll just straight up text you. We'll let you know what you got to do. Not going to be some cryptic wife trying to tell you to pick up eggs from the store by like writing Morse code on the shower mirror. This sounds like a personal story. I swear it's not. Cool. Cool. Hey, suck a pant. Hey, look, it's Sonic. I think he's in this game. Uh. Sonic, you're very good at pinball. You should smell my feet! Oh, Tails! He's been vaping way too much. Tails, you should've just chewed gum instead. Now I have to kill you in pinball! Ooh. I'm into this music. I completely forgot about this tune. This might be one of my favorite tunes of all time. Ooh, who's going to ham on the Game Boy piano here? Sheesh! Boo! You lose! I... Main menu! Somehow, they made a way for you to assume the role of a hero versus villain in a pinball game. Sega, if I can give them one thing, has always been very good at allowing there to be a good guy and a bad guy in every single random scenario, including party games, racing. It doesn't matter. Sega can think of a story for Sonic to have to overcome. I like the music, I like the extra content. There's mini games that you can play if you can do multiplayer. Oh, cool. I'm very glad that Samba de Amigo is available. Shoot song play hole, gotcha. Shoot song play hole fever. Vamos a carnaval. Si. Sí. See. Sí. Okay. You are ruining the music. I'm hitting these. Tetris. What even did I hit? What do you mean, boo? It was physically impossible to avoid. Right up in there. Nice. I I got an idea, guys. What if we? Stopped playing. Hot potato hockey ladder climb. Let's do some ladder climb. So you can't do these single player? Oh, cringe. Ah, gee, this multiplayer mode is very fun. I'm having a blast playing it, to be honest. Uh, especially on 
the GameCube Game Boy Player, which is what I was playing on the whole time. Uh, I find that pretty enjoyable. My name is Zach G. As in, like, G, I, G, I sure think I'm done. I also constantly ran into the issue where, although the graphics are nice, like, there's a lot of detail on each table, there's sometimes a little bit too much. Like, I feel like the Pokemon games did a really good job of contrasting the ball from the background, from the obstacles, and in this game they maybe didn't get that quite right, although it looks nice. It's very hard to tell where your ball is, where you can aim, what's an obstacle, what's just some glamour on the background. Uh, there's a lot of colors and a lot of flair, and it can get to be a little bit too much sometimes. I would probably go back and play this as a full-fledged game more likely than others. It doesn't have my favorite pinball side of things, but it's got enough extra content to keep me interested. Mm. Compared to the other ones. Quite a bit better than Spinball. I think I will put it in C, and the only reason C. it's not in the same class as a game like Pokemon Ball is just because this one thought of a really clever way to integrate Pokemon into Pinball, like mixing the two gameplays, which Sonic Spinball does in concept, but just isn't that fun. This game is just trying to be Pinball. And I give this more credit for it too. It could have been F if it didn't have that altogether. Like if this game was Mega Man Pinball or something, I, it would probably be F. And since I know all the know-it-alls in the comments are gonna be telling me, I know there is a Mega Man Pinball game, but it was for mobile and we're not covering mobile games. If you would have read the rules at the beginning of the video, you would have seen that. I'm really starting to get fed up with your incapability of paying attention to the things that you will be criticizing. And so, Peter, you're straw manning a random audience member again, stop. Okay. You know what they say, guys. The pack is back. The pack is back. Pack just can't do this anymore. The pack is seat. Pac-Man o Pinball Advanced. Don't know why they did that with the logo. Now I mentioned earlier some of the natural drawbacks to a pinball game, such as the fact that the ball can go straight down the middle, and there's just no way to save it, doesn't matter how much skill you have, or it can go down the side. This game falls susceptible to all of those in a, in a very extreme way. I think those issues with pinball are good if you're making an actual physical pinball machine, like an arcade game where you're trying to make money, right? Like, I get that. You'd want there to be some just random unexpected way to end the game when someone's been playing too long because you don't want it to be completely skill or else you wouldn't make any money if someone got really good at the game. Like, I get it. In video game form where you've already spent money on the video game, these shouldn't be issues. Like, put the little pin in the middle. Put the, put the Pikachu on the side. Why doesn't this game have a Pikachu in the side? I wouldn't even be mad at it if it did. Like, I'd question it. Maybe I'd be like, well, this is a bit weird, seeing as Pikachu is not from Pac-Man. But, yo, full CGI cutscene rendered in-game cartridge? That's insane. Jeez, if I woke up looking like that, I'd be scared of myself. Dear Pac, why would... I've, I've woken up to read a note on the inside of my door. Oh, these are some big boy flippers. Oh. It's like... Wait, this is like a reference to Pac-Man, I think. Do I get to play the game? The pack is back. He's a pack man. He does crack man. Eat all the pack dots. Oh. Well, that's a sick premise right there. Oh! Eat the pack dot, you pack turd! What is that? A rat, a rat, a rat, a rat. Mm, skill based matchmaking. I just can't. I can't not make this shot. I can't. Gosh, this game is fun. The flippers feel really underpowered, so it's really hard to aim at stuff. The sound is just very mid to, to low tier. In fact, that's funny I say that because this video is a tier list video, so that figure of speech is actually a direct literation of what I was gonna say, and I just made up how to use the word literation. And the graphics just aren't that great, and I wasn't a big fan of this one. No, it'll go here. I'm not gonna put it higher than Sonic Spinball. It's funny that people will be less insulted if I put Sonic Spinball on the same level as, as Pac-Man instead of putting Pac-Man at here and not moving this at all. Just putting Pac-Man above that, people would get maybe insulted and I kind of do agree with that sentiment. So we'll just leave D open for now. Leave D what open? D door, of course. That is a, uh, that is a Mexico joke for all of those of you who <laughs> can okay. And 
you guys may have heard of pinball, but you have not heard of Pinball of the Dead. No, that was supposed to be a question. I was supposed to say, have you heard of Pinball of the Dead? But it's fine, we'll roll with it. Not a game that I knew existed, but considering Typing of the Dead also exists, I guess I should have known. Oh, this is a scary game. I can only choose British. Woo! Oh, dang. There's no way this is pre-rendered. This has to be in console. It's ready to put the pinball in the, okay. Oh shoot, guns, no! That's inappropriate! Who could do such a thing? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. Oh, that's not the Triforce, that's like the Triquadriceb Force or something. You have? I didn't even know this game existed. I love these little flippers. Little tiny flippers, like, of the dead, though. As we go into that hole of the dead. Oh! That must be the Colosseum of the dead. Sick. If only I were better at the game, that wouldn't have happened. <laughs> Man, come on. There we go. All right. Judgment. He's going to judge me harshly, and I'm not a fan of that. I have a fragile ego, seeing as I'm a YouTuber. Whoa! Jump scare! This is just like 15 nights at Fr Aunt Frankie's. Okay. Good thing that guy wasn't very intimidating and just kind of looked at me, although it was still very scary. Of the dead. Nice. Alright. Type B. Oh, this guy's schmoovin'! He's hitting the gritty of the dead. It sounds like he's saying, I've been waiting for you. I forgot. Of the dead. There we go. That must be really good because it's making me feel fun. There's a lot of gameplay going on right now. Any day now. Oh, whoops. Oh, ouch. Oh, that hurt of the dead. Gary, back me up. Trusty Gary. Your pinball is showing of the dead. Ah, uh, there's just so much waiting. of the dead but there's like zombies going around the map the whole time just enemies that you hit and for the most part you hit them with your ball and it goes through them but if your ball doesn't have enough momentum it kind of bounces off them and that coupled with a very specific type of map design allows you to spend most of the game just waiting for the ball to go back down to the flipper so you can hit it again but uh, the over-the-top presentation a couple of mini games they throw in actually do make this one pretty intriguing and kind of a breath of fresh air after playing a lot of these ones really good not on the level of pokemon pinball C. Super Robot Pinball. Never heard of this or the series it's from, and going into this game specifically with no context of the series or anything about the game was... was fun. Ban Presto, what did he ever do? Has he been cheating at Super Robot Pinball? <laughs> oh, jeez. I've accidentally installed F-Zero for the Nintendo Game Boy. Alright, give me the purple... scramble. <laughs> okay. This, this is not how I expected to be spending my day. I, I, have, I have no concept of this game, by the way, before I started playing it. I added it to my list, I'm like, ah, I'll do the research on, like, the premise of it, uh, later. I mean, for all I know, this is a Flintstones character, and they're just playing this music because this is a bootleg. Well... Oh! Gotcha. Honestly, once you figure out what you're doing, and you kind of get past the random anime crossover jump scare, uh, that horrifies me to death. It's a pretty technologically impressive game. Like, after you've played all the Game Boy Color and, and Game Boy ones, we still have another Game Boy one to color here. This is actually pretty impressive, not only in the audio, but the visuals as well. It actually uses the Pokemon Pinball Ruby and Scooby Dooby uh, aspect of the camera follows the ball instead of cutting different screens, which is impressive for the Game Boy. Like, not even Kirby's Pinball was able to do that. And the aspect of boss appears, go get a mech, upgrade the mech, fight the boss, kind of neat. Not super depthful, not the kind of thing I really want to pick up and play again, but when you do, I could see where it can get pretty addicting for the good hour or so that you might pick up and play it. You know, I gotta... Oh. 
Here it comes. This is where people start cheering. Or crying. Put this up here. I'm gonna do one of these. C. Yeah, I think that's about right. It's just not D tier. It's not B tier. Like, it's not... I, I'm not gonna play this as much as I want to play these. It just feels super, like, very Game Boy, and it doesn't have enough redeeming features to break it out of that just Game Boy status in my brain, so... I don't dislike the Game Boy. <sighs> Maybe I do. I'll self-reflect on this later. <laughs> Kirby's Pinball Land. I will fully admit an extreme amount of bias on this game because this was literally the first video game I owned along with like four others that I got on the same day. It's interesting to look back at when you had a game as a child because when you only had like four or five games to choose from, you would give the game a lot more patience than you needed to, especially if it's difficult and a lot of the time when you're younger, you're playing older games, older games tend to be a little more difficult. Miyamoto was in his bully phase back then, or Sakurai or whatever. Not in terms of like, it's really easy to lose, or there's mechanics that really screw you over, just in the sense that it is very easy to have to redo the same thing like 15 times. You might not lose in between those times, but you lo you can lose progress very quickly on it. You get three worlds in this game. This is a full-fledged game of traveling and playing and going. But you don't really get to choose because a lot of the time, I'd play this game, and I'd be like, oh, I won't go Poppy! Nah, I just sucked, and I, I couldn't get Poppy. Now, the game is a little bit forgiving in the sense that it does have multiple levels that you go down. So, like, here I'm on Frosty Lair. That's Frosty. Uh, the snowman, you might know him from Christmas. And then he throws you up if you can time it correctly. Which I can indeed do. And now this is the top world. You gotta hatch all these eggs as a Poppy Bros, or whatever they're called, try and come out and stop you from hatching them. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming! He's coming. Land! An idiot! Now this guy tosses you. Gets you back up there. And I gotta redo all the eggs! See why this game would have been frustrating to me as a kid? You understand? Like, it's specifically designed to trigger childhood memories. Like, everyone had that experience as a kid trying to hatch their flippin' eggs, and Poppy Bro comes out and he's like, Veganism! Veganism! Don't touch the eggs! Now, once they get up there, the problem is, I would get them sometimes, and then I'd lose immediately after. Now, you get that warp star. And up here is where you kill the guy. You kill him for his stupidness. But this would always scare me a ton as a kid. Ugh! Because you land in the middle, you're just done. You gotta redo all this. And sometimes, they hit that thing, and you can't use that flipper for a bit. See, that's how- that's the mechanics of the game. I'm doing that thing where I'm a YouTube Let's Player who just describes the exact mechanics as they're happening. So now I go right back here, I gotta do all the eggs again. It's a good thing that I grew up with her, I wouldn't have the patience for it at all. This would be one of those games where I play it and I'm like, Guys, I just don't get this game. I don't know if anyone grew up with it and know how to play it. And all comments would be like, Peter, you didn't you didn't even do the research, you didn't play the game. Sometimes I don't want to go through boot camp for things I don't have an emotional investment into. Are you- <laughs> I thought I just lost in one hit. Fart! Butt fart! See, me playing this game is much more of a, uh... Oh, if you don't get it, they go back in, I forgot! I gotta do it again! See, this game is much more of a story, a journey, a struggle, than, uh, than just, like, a haha -ha funny moments I get to play this game. This is, like, this is serious business. Is it? Is it? We're back in Frosty Land. I'm gonna lose. Like... Ugh! Oh, shucks. Yeah, you can do that. Sure, give me that. I would love that. I totally hit that. I totally- I, I am absolutely hitting that. Fix your hitboxes, Sakurai. If you don't have rollback netcode in this game, I swear. Don't you touch him. There we go. Alright. And just like that, what was it all for? Welcome back to the very beginning of the game. I am quite happy about that. You can shake the screen with up. That's cool. Oh, that's extra cool. Ah. He's dead. Back to cracking. It's honestly symbolic of the times in the world we live in. I mean, every day we wake up and it's like, let's let's do the cracking. It's crack time. You gotta be actually good at this point. If you're playing this and you're not good, and I lost. Oh, I didn't lose. And I lost. Oh, never mind. You're bad. Yes? Okay, now if I don't mess this up, Holy moly, I gotta say, every time I'd see this little dance as a kid, I'd do it in real life. I'd do a little twirl in the dance. And here's the thing, I already beat the one on the right, right? So I want to go to either Cracko or Wispy, but sometimes you just miss. Third level, so we got this weirdo with his tongue out, he's been doing crack for about 12 hours. We gotta hit the sun. I think. 
cool. Sick. Uh, <laughs> oh, loved the music for this one. You got the Kirby slot machine, which enabled a lot of my gambling as a kid. I sure did enjoy that for a good two seconds. I don't want to go up yet. I want Warp Star. Congratulations! Thank you! Thanks for da the dance, guy! Oh, you should not be able to make it back from that, by the way. That's a glitch. Alright. I'm not even joking. I haven't played this in, in like somewhere near 20 years, so this is, like, a big honor, actually. I, do, I was never able to get a high score before. My name is Zip, Zipikai, uh, and now I get to restart. The funny thing was, sometimes you take the game out, and your high score just be gone, so I maybe got, like, the fourth one. I maybe beat Dendrob at one point, whoever the heck that is, and... Oh, is that Zendaya? Music is actually quite decent, and all the sound design and all that stuff, and it's, it's just a cutesy little Kirby adventure. Just very, very difficult. But I forgive it because Stockholm Syndrome and nostalgia. I, again, have a lot of bias towards this game. I'm not gonna say... I really like this one, I'm not gonna lie. I would go back and play this. Hey. I will probably go back and play it in my, in my fun times. If I can get it on the Switch, I'll probably get it on the Switch. And I really like the cover art. In terms of cover arts, I really like this one. And that's it. Mario Pinball Land. Everything on the Game Boy had to be land. Everything on the Game Boy Advance had to be land. You know what didn't land? This game. I don't like this game. I have in my notes. Ooey. I had this game when I was younger. Not as a kid, but maybe like nine or ten years ago, something like that. It was one of the few Game Boy Advance games that I had at the time, and I, I remember me and my brother playing it and being like, well, graphically, this is kind of neat. It's just not fun. Oh, full animated cutscenes rendered in game. He's dead. Mario Pinball Land. Mama's Pipi Lal. I love this sitcom intro music. That's great. I'm coming into this with a fully renewed spirit. I'm gonna try to enjoy this. Really let my patience and adulthood allow me to. Nope. All right, well, pretty good first life. Mambo! Mambo! Gosh darn it. Oh my gosh. It, the flipper is like... Yeah, yeah, okay, all right, cool. Yep, just let me back in. Just... Cool. <laughs> You're good, Mario. Uh, Mamma Mia! Guys think that the movie Mar Mamma Mia came first and that Mario's actually just a really big Meryl Streep fan. Oh, another secret passageway. Hmm. This is just like in The Emperor's New Passageway. Or something that's Egyptian themed. Is that Egyptian themed? It's a lot like 64 in Sunshine where you enter a world, there's several stars or shine sprites to collect in each one and different random objectives that you have to do to do that. The problem is, imagine that, but to get a star, you have to control Mario with pinball paddles. And to get into the level, you have to control Mario with pinball paddles. And to get into Peach's castle to select the level. See, I'm not like losing or anything. This just is taking 50 years. Dog, can you please chew on a brick like next week or something? I think this was Miyamoto's magnum opus. I mean, they had Happy Meal toys in this game, keep in mind. I had one. I got it, like, at a thrift store many years later. Some used burger-covered Mario ball. Sus Bob! Huge. I hope I can get it without dying. Nope! No, sir, try again. Fine, we're going to Bow Wow's castle. And there's nothing to do here. Goodbye. Wait, how do I even go back to the menu? Wait, what? Is there seriously nothing to do here? And no way to go back to the menu? Oh my goodness. The person who made this was extra smart. Game over, I guess. You just have to die several times. Guess I shouldn't have selected the one spot on the map that I w was thinking about. Shouldn't have done that. Game over. Main menu. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Alright, we're not going there despite the fact that the 
Cannon puts me there by default. There's not a person on Earth having more fun than I am. Is what I would say if nobody else on Earth existed. The game at least had some variation. It had some nice graphics, some nice music. Uh, the physics were fine, I guess. Everything else, like the design is just very boring and basic, but I do like the cover. I really did give this one a serious chance at two different points in my life, when I first got it and now, and just could not get into it either time. It's going E. E. It's not worse than these. It's not F. Uh, <sighs> I like the cover art. If I were a teacher and I was giving a class on what makes good pinball games and what might you use going forth from this classroom to become a better pinball game in the future, I would reflect upon the fact that pinball in and of itself is a somewhat flawed genre, just in the sense that it was originally designed to be not so perfectly skill-based, so that, you know, people would come back to play more and put in more quarters and try again and again. But I do love it as a genre, both physically and digitally in, in these pinball video games. And you'll notice most of these, in fact all of them, but this one, are handheld experiences that you can play on the go. And I think that is what kind of makes pinball, I think that's where pinball does kind of fit, right? Pinball tends to be an experience where you pick it up for 10 minutes, maybe you're on the toilet, but where pinball really thrives at a video game is where they can take that simple form factor, that genre that is really only great in short bursts, and make it so that you can actually sit down and want to continue playing it then you'll truly go far. Now, what do you do to do that? I couldn't tell you. Good luck with that. I'm not a video game designer and there's a reason that I talk about video games and don't make them at the moment. Until next time, I've been the guy who has a lot of opinions on a lot of different things, but tends to specifically put out my opinions on obscure genres such as pinball spinoffs because people won't get mad at me for that. One of those opinions, in fact, even being YouTubers should put out less of their opinions. So this is, this is my outlet. I like pinball. Thank you.